AutoCAD 117, Intermediate AutoCAD. Hi, Joe Cerrone. I'll be teaching this course with Alan Rosen, and I'm going to go through the lecture for Module 1. The lecture comes from the Technical Drawing 101 textbook, and the PowerPoint file can be found right here. So you can download that. It's going to look the same as this one right here. And I'm going to get started with it. So the objectives for the Intermediate AutoCAD course are to get people up to speed with the technology and, and the employable skills of CAD drafting. And so what we want to do is to go through what technical drawings are, talk about terminology, you know, how do you talk about or how do you describe things. We'll also explain how technical drawings are produced will become familiar with how to become an engineer, an architect, or a drafter, industrial designer, some of the career paths that people choose. I myself have a bachelor's degree in engineering design and drafting technology from Northern Illinois University in a minor in metals. And what I really liked about the program there was I'm not super good at math, and so it had a reasonable amount of math, but it allowed me to work on the technology aspects that I really enjoy doing. Describe the process of obtaining employment in technical fields. So what do employers look for and what type of uh, skills and traits are people looking for for people in this field? And then look at some of the career aspects and, and salary ranges. So it's kind of a broad chapter about technical drawing. As we go into the other chapters, it gets more into the actual detailed drawing aspect of it. And the book is great because it goes through both architectural and mechanical. And so we'll spend time on both of those. So when we look at technical drawings, they're basically a graphic language. You should be able to have a blueprint and be able to interpret that and then be able to make something from it, whether it's a mechanical part or a house or a building. And so there are certain rules to describe drawings, things like line types, line weights, and how they communicate to the person who's reading the drawing what those things mean. So there's definitely a language to engineering design and drafting technology. It's old. It's been around since Leonardo da Vinci. Um, people have made these technical drawings, and as the field has progressed, they, they have become more regimented with certain rules for creating them properly. If you look at the design process, uh, that's kind of the upper end of it, where you, you, you come up with an idea. What do you want to make? What is it? What is your concepts? My background was with packaging machines and construction equipment. So some of the design process would, would be sitting down with the salespeople and talking to them about what they want the machine to do. And so one of the machines that I used to design was a packaging machine for lumber. And so if you go into Home Depot or Handy Andy or Menards, and you look at the lumber, the green plastic strap that would hold those together, those were done by banding machines, and I used to design those. And so we would go out to Portland, Oregon, and talk to the salespeople, and they would tell us the problems with the machines. And then your job as an engineer or a technical draftsperson was to make the machine better. Another thing that we want to be able to do in intermediate CAD is to be able to describe what we want to do. So being able to sketch or being able to understand what it should look like on paper. This is kind of what drew me to CAD because I was really very poor at hand drawing things. And back, back in the 80s when I went to school, everybody started off on the drafting board. And when CAD became available, I think it was in around 85, 87, that was the first thing I, I took because it really cleaned up my drawings. And so here's an example of a CAD drawing and sort of the same thing. 
And the language is very specific. You have a concrete fill pattern here, and that's communicated by the hatch pattern. You have an anchor bolt. You have a 2x4. You have a ground material. And then the way the dimensions are located around the drawing communicate to the person reading the drawing what's important. Another thing is scale. When we create drawings in CAD, they're specific to the measurements. And so we can scale these drawings, and then it gives us the ability to see if things fit together. So CAD is a very good tool for using, uh, for creating drawings and to be able to make them so that we can communicate our ideas. Some of the CAD softwares that are out there, AutoCAD, uh, that's what we'll be using for this course. Revit is a, a, a modeling software for architects. Inventor is a modeling software for mechanical people as well as SolidWorks. And Pro Engineer is also a mechanical software. The price range on these CAD softwares, AutoCAD's about $3,500. Um, SolidWorks is about ten dollars um, so they're very expensive when you get down to it. And the student versions of the software are free. You're welcome to download those and use those. And some of the FYIs for your informations within this are what we're talking about in being able to understand and interpret blueprints, how to be able to communicate on paper. So as we look at the design process and some of the trends, um, they talk a little bit about the process and who checks the drawings and some of the trends as far as what architects do. Most people are using the CAD system now. CAD systems work very well. They're much more accurate. Training for CAD is mostly at community college level. Um, you can take a course at Oakton or at another community college and get some really great skills. Um, I recommend the CAD certificate. You can take three, three classes and be employable. Uh, we find we have a number of people that have taken that career path and done quite well with it. We talk a little bit about careers and training People typically start off as drafters and then they work their way up to designers. And designing is not easy. Having a blank sheet of paper and figuring out how you're going to make something is, um, is a skill that takes time to perfect. Whereas drafting, where you take that designer's ideas and then you, you, you draw those individual components, gives you the ability to see how things are made and how they fit together. So it's really a great way to start to learn the products, how things go together, and then work your way up to become a designer or a, a architect or a mechanical engineer. Professional engineers, um, architects, um, that requires quite a bit of schooling and, and a high degree of education. And you can become a licensed PE or you can become a licensed architect. There's just other career paths that you can take for that. Here's an example of an architectural drawing. It looks like it's either done on, it looks like a Revit drawing. It looks like something that would be done. Revit drawings are very clean and modern looking. They have rendering abilities. They're full blown 3D. They're parametric, which means if I change the window here, it'll update throughout the other drawings. And so the drawings become very intelligent. They, they call Revit CAD drawings BIM drawings, uh, building information modeling. And so here's another example of a drawing, an architectural drawing, most likely Revit. And here's a mechanical drawing. Now, the learning curve is pretty high on Revit in on some of the mechanical drawings as well, and most people use AutoCAD. So that's kind of the route that we're going to take. We're going to be able to do everything with CAD, AutoCAD, but there are other tools that are more sophisticated in nature that you may find, you may find that will also work for you.
So when we look at mechanical drawings, this would be a typical mechanical drawing with a front view and a top view. And then these little dashed lines and these circles with, with these center marks on them, they all communicate certain things. They, they can communicate uh, concentricity, they, they communicate location, and how that part is made. Other areas of drawing that are kind of neat, civil, uh, being able to, to do things like lot and block planning. Um, also very good skills to have and AutoCAD is kind of like that universal tool where you can do mechanical drawings, architectural drawings, civil drawings with it. Electrical, as far as being able to do electrical schematics, a lot of people will use AutoCAD for that. They'll create these symbols libraries and then they'll put together these electronic schematics which show how the components go together. So here's a 10K resistor. Um, I can go through some of these, but I'll have to go through my notes on it. Piping and processing drawings are done with AutoCAD. What are the qualities that people look for in hiring drafters? Most of them are looking for reliability and people who like the job and like to work. You have to be able to communicate and work with people. And you also have to have enough planning to be able to organize these projects so that you can make your designs and, and meet the timelines that are required to do that. And it really just takes time. Um, there's quite a bit of work out there for detailed drawing and drafting. We've had a number of students who've been hired by, one of the big people hiring people now for CAD jobs are the online uh, suppliers where places like McMaster Car who have these big catalogs full of parts are hiring CAD drafters to enhance their online catalogs because you can go to McMaster Car and you can download CAD models of the parts and you can see if those CAD models will work and then you can purchase them. So that's a new area that we've seen develop for people in, in the economy where now that everything is online, they also want these CAD models too. Concerns about applicants, you know, how do you fit in with others? Can you meet deadlines? You know, are you prepared for the job? Communication, they're all, they're all small things, but yet on the other hand, you want to be positive and you have to have certain survival skills in private sector or in the industry. And so as you go through, we'll teach you some of those things based on my experience and on the experience of Mr. Rosen. It's a good idea to keep a portfolio or to keep your drawings. It gives you something to talk about. When you go in and you talk uh, about your skills, it's always good to be able to put some drawings on the table and say, well, these are some of the things that I've worked on. This is my knowledge level of A, B, and C, mechanical or architectural. These statistics may be a little bit dated, um, but median earnings for somebody who's a CAD drafter, 53000 is a decent wage, and they typically are with benefits as well. So typically guys will start off around 15 to $18 an hour and then they'll work up from there. Whereas architects, engineers, electrical engineers, there's more stress and there's more pressure. And so the, the wages are higher. I was a senior design engineer for Illinois Tool Works and I was responsible from the beginning of that concept until that machine was delivered and put on the production floor. And so there's a certain amount of responsibility that goes with that, and the pay is usually reflected in that. Statistics as far as job growth, um, they're, rec they're, they're basically expecting a growth rate of about 6% into 2020, which is where we are now. In summary, um, the first chapter really just kind of gets you set up for what is the field about, what do architects do? What do mechanical engineers do? What do electrical engineers do? 
And there's some chapter exercises. We will not require them, but they basically have you do some research as far as schools that teach these CAD uh, technology programs. Okay, so that's the lecture for chapter one. The work for chapter one is located in the D2L module, and it will consist of these two labs and this third bonus lab. And you can download those labs, the PDFs right here, along with the title blocks. And there's a web page, a video, on how to construct this exercise here, and another one on how to do this one. I don't have one for the architectural one yet. I'll see if I can get one done. But that one's not required. You're welcome to do that. And what you're going to do is you're going to create these drawings from the title blocks that are given, and then you'll turn those drawings into the assignments folder. Okay, that's the rundown on the first module. Hope to see you online at our next Zoom meeting.